Hello, and welcome everybody to the Oak Park Art League. I am Jill Kramer Goldstein, the executive director here. Um, as we're uh, celebrating our centennial year, um, we've been really happy to share the space with these wonderful young poets from the Oak Park Education Foundation Spoken Word Club. I know I will certainly miss the enthusiasm and the creativity that has filled this space on Tuesday afternoons. It's gonna be so quiet next week. Um, so without further ado, let's listen to the poems. Hi everybody, my name is Miss Mo. I'm gonna take this off while I'm standing up here because I've been breathing into it all day. You know, when your air goes back into your mouth and it's really gross. Yeah, all day. Hi, I'm Miss Mo. A lot of you have heard about me, hopefully, unless your students are like just some crazy lady who writes with us. Um, I'm a spoken word teaching artist with the Oak Park Education Foundation, um, and I have been the one writing, reading, and working with your amazing poets, who you guys all have great kids, by the way. Um, they have prepared something truly special for you tonight, inspired by all of the art in this room. Um, this is the Everyday Activist Gallery, and so for the past three or so weeks, your poets have been coming in here. We sat down, we admired, we looked, we took it in, um, and then they wrote poems, and we edited, and they worked together. They were collaborative in their feedback, and now they're going to present those poems to you. So without further ado, kicking us off is going to be the one and the only Mackenzie Cohen. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Cohen, and my poem is entitled Voodoo Garden. It is inspired by Voodoo by artist Maria Katroke. I cannot sleep this evening, not as the party rages down below. I can hear the calls even in this hollow, so without another thought, I am leaving. Through the streets, I crawl, dancing and singing, with no matter, participating in all the chatter. But now I am lost down an alleyway hall. With lights of string as the sun sets in the eve, I see a sign above that reads, Voodoo Garden, and I hear more voices ring. In this club, music blares. I look around, and I hear a sound. Behind me, she sits in her gown. I cannot help but feel her stares. She beckons me closer. I sit down in a trance. She shuffles her cards. I pick by chance. She flips for over. One card reads of the sun, its smile makes me want to run. The next is of a reaper in black. The way it looks makes me want to turn back. The third reads of an angel, hands together, ever so faithful. And the last is of the moon, surrounded by runes. I look over and ask, what do they mean? And with her eyes way down low, oh, you'll see. And all of a sudden, the world melts away. I look up and see a painted world, the sun rays twirl and curl, but then my body jerks every way, and I see a sign above that reads, Voodoo Garden. When I'm up again, I see our reaper, and I scream, the world is no longer as it seems, and he reaches out like an old friend, and I see a sign above that reads, Voodoo Garden. Yet then I see a lovely light, her warmth holds me, an angel sings like a canary. But I'm ripped away without fight, and I see a sign above that reads, Voodoo Garden. Suddenly I hang on the moon, the wind whistles with frigid air, and it tossles my dark hair. But it all ends much too soon, and I see a sign above that reads, Voodoo Garden. I'm in the sun's bright glow, then back with the reaper and his dark creeper. I see an angel until I'm wrangled, back with the moon, reading its runes and back to the beginning, over and over, and I see a sign above that reads, Voodoo Garden. That was really nice for those of you who are in the space with us. This is the piece that Mackenzie was inspired by, um, Voodoo Garden. This artist also did witchcraft and magic, absolutely beautiful, they're a little what is the word I'm looking for? Three-dimensional? Yeah, they're, they're a little like pop-ups. <laughs> um, 
Thank you, Mackenzie. Friends, if you heard it, uh, if you hear something that you like, you may have noticed people are snapping. So if you hear a poet say something and you're like, ooh, that was nice. You can give them a little snaps. Do you all know how to snap? If you can't snap, that's okay. Give us a little twinkle. Be like, that was nice. That was nice. Um, all right, all right. Let's keep it going with our next poet, Hattie Garcia. Hi, my name is Hattie Garcia. Um, my piece is untitled, but it is by, um, inspired by the artwork over there called um, Story by Jacqueline Lakeley. Um, a sea of mysteries, a collage filled with fish and leaves, a pocket watch. Words without meanings, meanings without words, a confusing mess of nature, combining natural elements with fake, like how a faux flower is nothing like the real one, colorful stories hidden amongst loud pictures. For a second, there is an understanding, a whisper perhaps, gently flowing in your ear, sending soft messages of beauty and grace, of love and kindness, like a warm hug from a mother who missed you. Simple stories of the way things were before, a whole universe, a place where you accepted, loved, with whimsical colors and stars adorning the deep, the deep purpley sky, like pearls against a stunning velvet gown, a peaceful place in a world of wonder. Confusing, but if you've been there, you'll understand. It's almost like a dream. There is a haze, a fog, if you will, that looms so thick that you can't see but a few feet in front of you. However, it's not what you can't see that it's important. It's what you can. Fish that swim gracefully in the air, mimicking feathered reflections that soar ever gracefully through the endless skies. Flowers taller than anything, and there you float peacefully, every breath filled with a scent of dew. Every time you blink, there is starlight beneath your eyes. This place is whatever you want, whenever you want it. You only need wish, you only need wonder. Um, I think one of my favorite things to do is ask your poets when they're asking me for feedback, just have them read it, and they're like, I'm reading you this poem so you can give me feedback on it. And it's so different when they stand up here and they perform their, their poem, and I'm like, that's what I was looking for last week. This was beautiful. You guys are such great performers. You just don't know it until you're in front of a mic. All right, all right, let's keep it going with our next poet, Iris Lloyd. <laughs> poem is in, untitled and it's in, inspired by the piece What is Going On by Fran Sanson. A painting, a puzzle, something to be solved. Where does this go? Where does that go? Does it matter if it's cats or dogs, erubious or traditional, wood or cardboard, colorful or black and white, neon or pastel? Does it really matter? A painting, a picture, something to be solved. Um, so the paintings, if you guys have seen them, I know it's a little hard for our friends streaming in with us, which is why I encourage you to please step into the gallery space while this is still up. Um, the painting that Hattie was inspired by is going to be this last one right here. Iris, if you want to point to it for just a second. Bueno, and the one that Iris is inspired by is this yellow piece right here above this tree that Jill is pointing to. So we will definitely have time to check them out after our poets are done reading. But if you're in the space, just kind of taking a peek, kind of getting a just a little moment of what they were seeing when they were writing. All right, we're going to keep it going with one of my favorites, Lily Wright. Go on and get up here. Um, I'm Lily Wright, and I did the, and my um, poem is called Talk to Me. And it's inspired by the piece Talk to Me by Jeff Anderson. <laughs> Talk to me. Tell me everything I need to hear. Do not shelter me. Do not hide me from the troublesome truth that threatens to twist our world from its hinges. Do not downplay my privilege, for it weakens my eyes, forces others to be my glasses, to introduce me to change and privilege depriving me of the ability to see night and its cloaking darkness, blinding me to the facade of perfection. Talk to me. 
for I'm not weak, though I lack in muscle. I can hold a bridge of pain and swallow a plate of injustice. Talk to me, for I hear the cacophony of screams and the wretched, and the wretched tune of symphonies of I can't breathe. Talk to me. Share with me all the colors of the world and the darkness that comes with the light. Paint me a picture with a single sentence and a gallery with a paragraph. Talk to me, for I'm, I know more than you can fathom, but not enough. Talk to me. Um, so aside being a spoken word teaching artist, I'm also a stenographer. Um, sometimes your poets send me pictures, and then I type the entire poem up. Which sounds like it will be really frustrating, and it is in the moment, but um, it's a really beautiful experience for me because when I get to type them, it feels like I'm writing them, and for a moment I get just kind of a glimpse into what it might, might have felt like to be your poet as they were writing it. So it's a very interesting experience to type something for them and write right beside them. Um, yeah, that was just a thought. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going with the one and the only Grant Stringfield. <laughs> My name is Grant Springfield. Um, my poem is called Theater Night, inspired by Theater Night and the painter I forget. Um, do you remember when Chicago? Thanks. Do you remember when Chicago was wild, where the natives once thrived on a mystical land, where flowers grew placed on the shore of Lake Michigan, anchored to the prime spot for life, trade, and travel? Once a city of possibility, now gray and barren, what happened to the inspiration and ideas of the beautiful big city, ancient tribal land, now a light-up sun? The city once had culture, now the only flowers are the skyscraping towers. Once exciting and full of life, the only thing you see are hazy figures shifting through time and space. These lands are my home, and I hope we can once again live alongside nature. So I ask you to take up the call and regrow the forest, save the endangered, and bring us together. I hope we can make Chicago a home for all. Um, that is the second Chicago poem Grant has written. I also teach the, residi the residency at both Brooks and Julie Middle School for the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And I had the pleasure of working with Grant. And when he was like, can I just write another Chicago poem? I was like, uh, I'm a Chicago person, so yes, you can write as many as you like. Please do. All right, let's keep it going. For those of you who don't know, that is Mr. Colucci. Colucci is a part of our OPF spoken word team. He is the sixth grade LNL teacher at Julian. And while we're doing names, calling people out, let's give it up for one of my other team members, Mr. Lee, who is the seventh grade LNL teacher at Brooks. One of my favorites, spoken word and art start director, Joel Javier. The lady, the myth, the legend, and the executive director, Tracy Delangelo Barber. <laughs> and you guys have met the pretty stunning and our gracious, most wonderful host who lets us hang out in here even when we're acting a little crazy, we're being a little loud, we want to run around outside and play with bugs all day. Um, Jill Goldstein. <laughs> And we can't unforget uh, the whole reason our friends at home are able to hang out with us. Everybody give it a hand for David. Hey, hey. Um, all of these people have made this event right now possible um, from live streaming it to hosting us to supporting me, supporting your poets, um, and just being in this space in this wonderful gallery. So I always want to shout them out. Did you say what? Oh, I said and being very lazy. They've, Mr. Colucci always says he's going to show up and then he doesn't. <laughs> so they've got some issues, but we're going to move past it. We're going to move past it. It's okay. You're here now. And we're going to move past it with the one, the only, Serena Ramon. Uh, hello, my name is...
my name is Sabrina Rahman. My piece is called Naive Little Butterfly. Uh, it is inspired by Love Laird by the artist Carly Grant. Minor warning, it is a very cheerful painting, but I have a tendency to write depressing poems, so do not expect this to be just your little walk in the park. <laughs> anyway, let's begin. Flapping wings gifted by the rainbow and northern lights, a presence who lifts the mood after long rainy nights. Skinnier than the bee, yet shares the same thirst for nectar. Look at it glide, thinking that it can make the whole world better. Naive little butterfly, the world is cruel, and alas, you are but nature's tool. Your beauty is envied by many on this earth. They would never care if you got hurt. Oh dear, can't you see? The world is an awful place to be. What was that? What did you say? Love perseveres? Ha! Love has only ever ended in tears. Naive little butterfly, can't you see how hate-filled our world is? Everyone wants to make themselves a king. Wars are waged and blood is shed. At each other's hands, we are all destined to be dead. And it is not only each other that we wish to harm, but also Mother Earth, ever so loving and warm. We cut down her trees to make room for unnecessary cities, pollute her air as we ignore pleading nature committees. Is that a tear that, that falls from one of your eyes? Oh, naive little butterfly, you should cry. Now before I leave you who I adore, I must say your wings would make a lovely decoration for my bedroom door. consistently blown away by what your poets have to write and what they have to say. I don't know if they've ever talked about any of the conversations we've had here, but um, I am the kind of person who thought when I became, so I'm a teaching artist, I'm not like a teacher, right? But I was like, oh, I want to teach. So I was like, I have to have a plan. Every plan I've come in with, they've been like, that's nice. And then they just kind of commandeer the conversation and they commandeer the moment. Everything is centered towards how they want to do things. Um, and they write what they want, and I think that is a very powerful thing, especially because they are young people, and I remember when I was their age, I was not as bold, I was not as brave, and I was not as open with my feelings as they are, so big shout out to your poets. <laughs> All right, I've got uh, one more poet for you um, from the lady herself, Willa Allison. <laughs> Hello, my name is Willa Allison. The, my title is called This Is Not A Box. It's very important in all, capital, all caps. It is very different from the original title, This Is Not A Box, with only one capital, and it by Jonathan Franklin. This is not a box, or is it? I honestly don't know. It could be, it could not be. I spent long and hard thinking and I came up with this. It's not a box, but it is a box. A box that means something, more than a, a trap, or no, not a trap, something trap. No, not trap, but hidden out of sight. Something to be protected. Something, something, something trapped under a box. But what is this something? A memory? A memory that doesn't want to be remembered? And a mem, and a mem, it's a memory that the man or woman that lived in 1,152 S. Taylor over, Avenue Oak Park doesn't want to remember, something that will never be known, but I'm just going too far down a rabbit hole. In reality, it's simple. My final statement is that the artwork of the residents of 1152 S. Taylor Avenue Oak Park just simply just drew a box. It's just a box. Or is it? I honestly don't know. It's not a box. It's artwork. It's artwork of a box, but it's not a box. It's that simple. The artist in 1152 S. Taylor Avenue Oak Park just drew a box. It's not a box, or is it? I honestly don't know. Very nice, very nice. Oh, I don't need the paper anymore. That was all the poets. Unless there's something you know that I don't. There's an ex is there an extra poem in there? I can do it. No. <laughs> um, friends are friends are friends of mine. It is, that was all of our poets. That was 
Um, just a few members from our club, I would like to say there are a few spoken word members who are just kind of feeling some burnout and are feeling uninspired and so they couldn't be here with us tonight. So I just want to give them a quick little shout out. <laughs> Um, and I want to give another shout out to your poets who have just kind of kept going and been like, you know what, if I'm not going to do schoolwork, I'm going to do spoken word. Uh, that's a very powerful thing for me, so I'm glad that they're here. <laughs> um, friends, like I said, that is all the poets that I have for you tonight. Um, Jill's going to come back up here in a moment. Um, but I just do want to give like a final little shout out, if I can, for our end of the year slam, which will be June... 29th, it will be virtual on Zoom, so you guys won't have to come into a space. It'll be really easy peasy lemon squeezy, I promise. Um, but that is going to be the next event that we are working towards. So parents, friends, siblings, please, please, please prep for that. Push your poets to keep writing to get their slam piece ready um, and to answer Miss Mo's emails. Please. Parents, that goes for you too. Some of you don't answer your emails. And I can tell, okay, I, I keep track. Anyway, uh, thank you for having our poets. Thank you for having me. Jill is gonna give us some closing words. Maybe we can hang out looking some, looking some art. That's her. That's her. All right, well, I guess all I wanted to do is, again, thank you all for coming. Um, you know, we are always free and open to the public. Our exhibitions change monthly. Um, so uh, the second Friday of every month from 1 to 9, we've been open to kind of extend our hours, invite you in to take a look at what's, what changes on our walls. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this can be, I don't know, maybe a once or twice a year thing, even as schools come in. Um, this has been one of my favorite things to host. Um, the first time we did this was uh, in the fall of 2019, and then obviously had to take a break. So... I am hopeful that it will happen again, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.